Find other great podcasts like this one at podmoth.network. Do you have a hunger for cinematic horror? Do you enjoy the thrill from seeing boogeymen, beasts, and butchers go about their dark work? Then all you need to do is speak of the devil and the devil will come to you. Speak of the Devil is a podcast for all movies that have anything from demons and poltergeists to serial killers and the supernatural. I'm Kayla. And I'm Taylor. Join us as we embark on a journey through the dark recesses of horror films, from the classics to blockbusters and everything in between. New episodes come out every Wednesday wherever you listen to podcasts. We're not scared of anything. Are you? The year is 1926, and in Washington, D.C., Harry Houdini has pitted himself against psychic mediums. The Congressional Subcommittee hearing has garnered national attention because the topic fascinated newspapers and readers alike. Houdini's spectacle could expose the lives of some very high-ranking U.S. officials, including the president. The interest in this event is certainly not from a lack of anything else that's going on. The 1920s were full of firsts. In 1920, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, giving women the right to vote. In 1923, Tutankhamun's tomb is opened by Howard Carter. The first Macy's Thanksgiving Parade is held in 1924. In 1926, John Logie Baird conducted the first public demo of a television. Some other biggies. The end of World War I, Lindbergh flying the spirit of St. Louis across the Atlantic, Alexander Fleming discovering penicillin, and the Wall Street crash of 1929 leading to the Great Depression. A lot was happening, but in 1926, newspapers raved, Spiritualists in clash over Bill with Magician. And even more interesting than the subject matter was one of Houdini's detectives. 34-year-old Rose Mackenberg had joined Houdini in the 20s, and he became one of his secret weapons. She gathered extensive evidence against fraudulent spiritualists and went deep undercover pretending to be an attendee at many seances, In only two years, she'd investigated over 300 mediums. She'd been ordained a spiritualist minister six times, for a fee, of course, earning the nickname The Rev within Houdini's circle. Quote, An initial hearing before a House subcommittee was held for the bill in February 1926, with three more days of testimony in May. And with a showman like Houdini at the helm, the hearing was, unsurprisingly, a spectacle. According to Rose Mackenberg, the days were filled with riots, a welter of conflicting testimony, shouted objections, muttered oaths, and copious tears, as Houdini and the spiritualists battled it out. Like the entertainer he was, Houdini showed the fascinated subcommittee how some of the medium's tricks were performed. And in an attention-grabbing stunt, he even offered $10,000 to any medium present who could demonstrate that their claims of otherworldly communication were true. The ruckus got so bad that one day's hearing had to be adjourned to restore order. End quote. The Astonishing Adventures of Houdini's Favorite Detective by Karen Lee Hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to another episode of the Identity Podcast on the Podmoth Media Network. 
your foray into the weird, wonky, and sometimes downright spooky. This week I offer a tale that weaves together spiritualism, Harry Houdini, and a detective named Rose Mackenberg. As you may remember from a past episode, Houdini wasn't a fan of spiritualists. He saw them as charlatans, who took impressionable and grieving individuals for all of their money. Playing on human emotion and gaining money and fame, leading to even more money and fame, was something that many of the big players did very well, and Houdini thought that it was bullshit. It was indeed bullshit. Houdini created illusions for fun and frolic, understanding that many people knew that his tricks were just that. The tricks that these spiritualists played were made out to be real-life interactions with the dead, floating tables, regurgitated cheesecloth, and disembodied voices included. And now, on with the show. Houdini wanted to expose these spiritualists, but he was only one guy. A passionate fellow, no doubt, but he couldn't be everywhere at once. His skills of prestidigitation considered. So he hired a group of detectives. Among them was Rose Mackenberg. Many articles describe Mackenberg as a ghost hunter or a girl detective. Mackenberg was a detective, and she had been working as one for several years before meeting Houdini. She wasn't a girl, she was a woman. Anyway, rant over. Houdini called this group of detectives his secret service, and they were charged with investigating spiritualist operations and uncovering their deceit. So, ghost racketeers were a dime a dozen, and Houdini was over it. When it came to spiritualists at the time, it was a rarity to find a horse of a different color, and more likely than not, the horse you ended up with was sadly another animal ridiculously disguised as a horse, and even turds with good intentions can't be picked up by the clean end. There were likely some spiritualists who wanted to help and saw benefit in encouraging those grieving to reach out to their loved ones in the beyond. It offered closure for some people, but the majority were, well, turds. Anyway, I digress. Mackenberg, born on July 10th of 1892, grew up in New York City and as a teen came to embrace a belief in spiritualism. Many people at the time had done the same, and Mackenberg was no exception. It wasn't until she met Harry Houdini in the early 1900s that her opinion on spiritualism changed. Mackenberg consulted with Houdini regarding an investigation on spirit fraud that she was working for her boss at the time, and Houdini was beyond impressed. She was a firecracker, rational and quick-witted, so after he advised her which steps to take to expose the fraud, he said that he wanted her to join his team. Twenty investigators had been hired to travel ahead to his touring locations, these detectives would infiltrate and expose local spiritualists, and Houdini would expose their fraud at his scheduled show. From Atlas Obscura, quote, Inevitably, this tactic made Houdini and Rose many bitter enemies, angering both true believers who felt that they were attacking their religion and ghost racketeers who knew that they were threatening their livelihood. Sometimes the hostilities between pro- and anti-spiritualists erupted in riots, and more than once, Rose and other members of the Secret Service were caught up in the fray. Partly as a safety precaution, Rose also became something of a mistress of disguise. Her first stop in a new town or city was to visit a department store and take detailed notes on clothing worn by various local types of women, so she could plausibly pass muster as a rustic schoolteacher, a small-town matron, or a smartly garbed widow. Her training with Houdini encompassed all of the tricks of the fake seance trade, and left her disabused of her teenage belief in the ability of mortals to communicate with the spirit world. Like her employer and mentor, she professed some sympathy for those mediums who genuinely believed in their own powers and who practiced spiritualism sincerely, devoid of conscious charlatanism. Also, like Houdini, though, 
She was contemptuous towards ghost racketeers and cynically took advantage of vulnerable people. End quote. In 1949, Mackenberg spoke to a reporter at the Hearst newspapers, boasting, quote, I can smell a rat before I can smell the incense, end quote. And she found a lot of rats. In 1925, she visited Charles Gonsalas, a man who described himself as one of the leaders of spiritualism in America. Mackenberg pretended to be a bereaved mother who had lost her baby and wanted to check on the infant to ensure that it had made it to the other side. I think it's also important to note here that when she introduced herself to Gunsalas, she likely went by a pseudonym like Alicia Bunk, all is Bunk, or Francis Rod, F. Rod. Gunsalas, of course, obliged, setting the price tag of $25 to alleviate the widow's woes. He had contact with an 800-year-old Hindu guide, as well as his own spirit wife named Ella. All she would have to do was to gaze into a bowl of water. Apparently, he added that doing so naked would make the process more fruitful, but Mackenberg politely declined. Houdini arrived to do his show in Indianapolis six weeks later and called Gonsalas, who was in attendance, out publicly, telling the audience all about what happened at Mackenberg's seance. The man supposedly mumbled something about also hating frauds and fraudulent practices before fleeing the theater to jeers and cackles. Mackenberg was often propositioned and groped by male spiritualists, but even though Houdini suggested she carry a gun, she resisted. Overall, she handled each situation with a level of grace and commitment that I don't think that many would have been able to muster. She commented to a reporter from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch in 1937, I never married, but I have received messages from 1,000 husbands and twice as many children in the world to come. Invariably, they told me that they were happy where they were, which was not entirely flattering to me. Upon Houdini's unexpected death in 1926, she continued to take on clients. She worked with the police, insurance companies, and the Better Business Bureau. Mackenberg became a lecturer and revealed all of the tricks that she'd seen fake mediums use in the dark. She wrote for the newspaper and several magazines and an autobiography entitled, So You Want to Attend a Seance? A Hearst syndicate claimed that she was perhaps the only woman ghostbuster in the world. Even after all the seances that she'd attended and the charlatans she'd exposed, Mackenberg insisted that she wasn't a non-believer in spiritualism. She was willing, open to see proof of the existence of an afterlife. She just never received it. Mackenberg passed away on April 10, 1968, at the age of 75, residing for decades in an apartment in Manhattan at 310 West 24th Street. Apparently, she kept the place well lit, because she'd spent so much time in seances that she tired of dark rooms. Rose Mackenberg's manuscript has gone unpublished, something of a travesty in my opinion, but apparently a copy still exists. On wildabouthoudini.com, an article details a post from a seller discussing a crystal ball supposedly used by Houdini, not something that I would think he'd be keen on, and a copy of the manuscript, publishing rights not included, which I think is far more valuable. I hope that someday this manuscript can be shared and enjoyed. I'll add a link to the article so that you can peruse. That's it for this week, dear listeners. Tune in next time for more tales of the creepy, weird, and paranormal. Until then, stay spooky.
The Identity Podcast is brought to you by host Janine Mercer. The podcast is written and edited by Janine Mercer, unless otherwise stated, and the music is created using GarageBand. You can find The Odd Pod on Twitter and Instagram at IdentityPod, and a transcript of this episode can be found at theidentitypodcast.wordpress.com. Don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, leave a review, and subscribe so that you'll be in the know when a new episode drops.